Okay guys, here is a quick video showing you how to use gradients in Adobe Illustrator. So I've seen a number of people use gradients already on some of their projects, so I just want to go over them so um, you know exactly how to control them the best way. Um, before we start, the number one thing I can say with gradients is do not overuse gradients, okay? Uh, use them subtly and use them just in one, maybe two places in a composition. If you use them all over the place, it's going to uh, look disjointed and look like a student that just learned how to use the gradient tool. Okay. Usually I'll use it in a sky or a background uh, where I just want a little bit more interesting values than just a simple flat shape. Okay. So you can apply gradients to any sort of shape out there. I have a rectangle drawn here. You can put gradients on a fill or on a stroke. I have never once used it on a stroke, only for fills, okay? So I'll go down here and look and my fill is on top. And then this is the gradient button right here. So that will basically turn the gradient on, okay? And when I push this, this gradient panel pops up. It's this one right here. Uh, if it doesn't pop up for some reason, it will be under window gradient. Okay. All right, so there's just some settings in here to control your gradient and make it do exactly what you want it to do. Uh, there's two types of gradients, linear, which is just in a line along the shape, or radial, which is radiating out from the center. We'll stick with linear for now. Um, this little angle symbol changes the angle of your linear gradients. Okay. Uh, we'll leave this at zero for now. Um, now all these sliders, so this one here, this little diamond slider in the middle, this represents the halfway point. So this is where the 50% gray would be on this. Oops, let me select it. So you have to have the shape selected in order to make those changes. There we go. So this is moving the halfway point over to here. And then this moves the halfway point over to here, okay? Uh, you can also move these sliders, so it's just moving where that white starts or where the black starts. All right. Uh, the biggest thing here, when I say use a subtle gradient, that means don't go from pure white to pure black, because that creates a lot of value contrast just right here in the shape, which you usually want to avoid. So usually I will go from white, uh, about you know, white to a maximum a fifty percent gray, probably not even that much. Okay, so let's keep this to a more subtle gradient. There we go. So that looks a little bit nicer from a white to a light gray. So in order to change that, you just double click on these little sliders and you can adjust that starting value. But again, I just messed up there. You have to have the shape selected, okay? You can put in more stops along here and chain and have multiple gradients going on, okay? Uh, if it looks like this when you click on the sliders, click this little option and go to grayscale. So those three little lines. So as you can see now, I'm getting multiple gradients. I'm going to change it to grayscale. Okay. Um, I usually only use those two stops. If you get more than two, again, it will get a little busy and a little complicated. So if you add one of these by accident to get rid of it, you just click and drag it down. Click, drag it down, click drag it down. Oops. Again, my shape is not selected, so that didn't work. There we go. All right. Um, so that's the panel. You can also adjust the opacity of your gradient, just how uh, see-through it is. Um, wait. Alright, so there's another way to control your gradients as well, and that's with the gradient tool. So that's right here, so G. I kind of like this tool a little bit more because it gives you a little bit of a visual um, of how to control that gradient. It does all the same things as the panel. It's just with a slider right on top of that shape. I like this more for controlling the angle of the gradient because I can see exactly what that gradient is going to do rather than trying to select these numbers up here not knowing exactly what each number will represent. Uh, you can click on the end and stretch for how long the gradient will take place. You can also change those values of the gradients here by double clicking it there as well. Okay, And then the same thing with if you have a radial gradient, 
this can be controlled the same way uh, as well. I showed you where I used that radial gradient on um, one of my projects yesterday, but this can be a good way to get good value contrast. Again, if you have a focal point, okay, I do not want a gradient on here. I want a black fill and no, no stroke. So this can be a good way to put your focal point right there in the brightest part of that radial gradient. I would not put it down there because there's not as much value contrast. Put it up there, go back to my gradient tool, and yes, now my radial gradient is... Why can't I adjust this? Oh, that is why, I believe. There we go. Uh, the only reason I was not a, it was saying it was locked is because this, the fill was not activated. So that means the stroke was on top, so that doesn't let me activate. So you have to make sure that fill is activated on top. And then, oops, then I can line this up and put my focal point right there in the middle of that gradient. Okay. So if you use gradients, don't use just maybe one or two and keep them subtle as you use them in your project.